Good morning. We would like to welcome you to Aldersgate United Methodist Church as uh, we worship together this morning. In whatever home or place you find yourself in, we are thankful that you are joining with us today to worship God. Our, our attempt today is to provide you with a worship service that looks familiar to uh, our congregation. And if you are joining us uh, from outside of the congregation, thank you for uh, being present. <clears throat> so things will be different. We've got an empty sanctuary here, but uh, we know that there are a lot of you that are viewing today, and we are so glad that you are here. So now we invite you to tune your hearts and your thoughts to the worship of God as we hear the prayer. In fact, if you would like to be on a Zoom gathering, please send us an email or let us know, and we will seek to include you in on a day this week. And as you know, our services are canceled through April 5th 
because the uh, announcements from our health officials and our public officials change on a regular basis, please uh, consult our website and uh, we will seek to communicate with the congregation about further updates about our church plans. So we want to welcome you. Now, we would like to invite you to participate in a holy commotion. We do this every Sunday as we stand and greet one another. Uh, it's often the handshakes, high fives, fist bumps, elbow whacks. I guess you could do those in your own home. Feel free to do that as you feel led. But I'd like to invite everyone to hit the heart button and let the hearts bubble up and let there be a holy commotion on the screen. And you can do that any time. So like when Pastor Emmanuel is preaching and you want to shout amen, we won't hear you, but we can tell by the hearts that bubble up. And I can see they are bubbling up. We got a commotion going for the joy of the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength as we celebrate worship today.
Please join me in the invocation. God of light, you do not see as others see. You look beyond our limitations and find us strong and beautiful for your purpose. Help us now to see Jesus, your Son, who, through he was despised and rejected, became our beautiful Savior. Show us Jesus' face in the face of those who suffer, and lead us to give your healing touch to all. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, and we want to go ahead and have our time for children. And so children, if you want to uh, uh, join in, feel free to hit the heart button and uh, join us uh, and as well as the adults too. So anyway, I've got uh, the, uh, the treasure chest here that is uh, got some things in it. And uh, I've got, oh my, that's half a shoe. Oh, what good is that going to do? I'd have to run on my heel. I've got a bungee cord. Oh, no. It's just a half a bungee cord. That won't work too well. And here's a hymnal. Uh, don't tell our musicians that I used my bandsaw to cut this hymnal in half. Because a half a hymnal would be a little hard to use. You'd only sing half a song. You'd only be able to uh, use half the book. Oh, my. And if you went to do some work and uh, you had half a glove, oh, my, that would only protect you halfway. And what about half a cup? Oh, no. If we had half a cup, it would be a little hard to drink water. Now, uh, you can try this at home, and perhaps you'll find a way. And then, um, this week we made a birdhouse, but here is only half a birdhouse. Now, do you think a bird would use half a birdhouse? I don't think so. Well, approaching our faith, we're invited and commanded to give everything we have, not just half of who we are, from Deuteronomy chapter 6, what if the verse read like this? Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you shall love the Lord your God with half your heart, and with half your soul, and with half your might. Oh my, that would be a sad day. The commandment is to give everything you have for our God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. I invite you to place your total trust in God during these times and to cling to Him for His promise and His favor. Lord, so many things in life are just halfway. And yet our love for you grows each day through sunshine and through shadow. Bless our children that they may not fear and that they will be able to place all of their trust in you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue in our time of worship, let us prepare our hearts for prayer by singing hymn number 381, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us.
We have an emergency fund here at Aldersgate, and if you would like to give to that, we invite you to mark your gift, emergency fund. May God bless you as you give, and if you have needs, may God bless you even more. Word of God. 
God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. I am so excited and so pumped up to come your way this morning with the Word of God. And we thank God for the gift of technology, the ability to be the church even when we are not face to face. Amen. This morning we came your way to inspire you, to encourage you, to offer you hope. We came your way to let you know that you can experience the peace of Christ in the midst of the storm. You can experience the peace of Christ in the midst of a storm. So Jesus had finished ministry at one location and he was moving to another location, another location, sorry. They were on the sea. Having a smooth sail, enjoying the breeze of the night. And all of a sudden, unexpectedly, the storm arose, the winds blew, and the waves was beating against their little boat. The disciples became so terrified. These guys were experienced fishermen. They knew how to swim. They knew how to do all the different styles of swimming, but at this time, the waves were too strong for the experience. The winds, the storm was too great for their capacity to contain and to survive it. And so they ran to Jesus, Master, save us, for we are perishing. They were filled with fear, anxiety, panicking. And friends, as we move in life from one point to another, stuff happens to us. Unexpected events break open on us. Nobody desires to move from one location or one point in life to the other, expecting some catastrophe. Nobody anticipates some kind of suffering normally as we journey through life. But the reality of life is stuff do happen. Challenges do break upon people. But the good news is that friends, Christ Jesus is on board with us. Amen. It was not about the storm. It was not about the waves and the sea. It was about Jesus Christ who was with the disciples. And just as he was with them, he is with us in this storm. Christ is on board with us. You, you may be socially distanced, you may be in a nursing home somewhere and you feel so panicked, you feel so afraid and you are terrified. But we came this morning to encourage you that Jesus is on board with you. You may be a teacher and you are migrating to an online platform and you don't even know how that is going to look like. How are you going to teach your kids when they are in their home and you're not going to have a face-to-face -face interaction with them? Jesus is on board with you. You may be laid off at work and you are thinking about how am I going to provide for my family? Finances are being hit. Economic life is changing a little bit. Jesus is on board with you. You may be a pastor and, and now you have to figure out different ways. You have to you know, bump up your creative juices in order to reach out to people and sometimes you can be so anxious. Jesus is on board with you. No matter how you are feeling right now, Christ Jesus is on board with us. Amen. And that's because he is a God who participates in the life of his people. Wow. We are not serving a God who is somewhere out beyond the blues. 
No, he is so much interested in our, in our life because he's a God of relationships. He participates with us when we are on the mountaintop. And he participates with us when we are deep down in the valley. He is with us when it's all joyous and celebration. And he is also with us when we are having sleepless nights. He is on board. You are not alone. He promised us in Isaiah chapter 49, 1 and 2. He said, when you pass through the waters, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to be a coach standing on the shore and telling you, you know, just swim harder. Swim harder, you'll get out of it. No, instead he says, I will be with you in the water, mm -hmm. in the floods of life. And when you pass through the fire, he said, you will not be consumed. You will not be burned up. God is participating in your life right now. I'll tell you what. The pandemic may be real. The storm may be strong. But more real is our Jesus. Christ Jesus, who is on board with us, is stronger, more powerful than the storm that we are facing right now. And because of that, you can experience His peace. I like, I like, I like what the disciples did. After trying and trying and fighting with the experience, finally, they went to their master. They went to Jesus. They shifted their attention from the storm to the Savior. Oh man, wow. They, they shifted their attention from the storm to the Savior. And this morning we came your way, the, the worship team here, the pastor team here, we came your way to invite you to shift your attention from the storm to the Savior.
That the word of God is like water that washes and cleanses our soul. So I have a jar of water here. This is us. We've been filled with all the fear, anxiety, and all things that are threatening the peace of our minds. Let's see what happens to our little demons right now as I pour the water into it. Pour it, brother. Pour it. <laughs> all right. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. See what happens to them. They are coming out. See what happens to your fear as the word of God gets into your life. See what happens to your anxieties as you are being filled with the word of God. See what happens to your panic as you are being filled with the word of God. Amen. Amen. They can get out of you as you fill your heart with the word of God. That's why you need to join us on our inspirational hub to come and feed your faith with the word of God. That's why you need to hold on to the promises of God in the scriptures at this time. When, when you go to Facebook alone, you will see a lot of rumors, a lot of negative news, and those who bring demons and those who fill your heart with fear and anxieties. But when you hold on to the word of God, when you hold on to the rich promises of God, all those things will get out of your heart and then you are able to experience the peace of Christ, even in the midst of the storm. Another way that you can fill your heart, I love the hymns, Giselle, Elena, and uh, Washington. I love the hymns of the Methodist book. It's, it's so timeless. They speak so much to us and we can glean from the promises of God in our hymns. So take your time at home. Sing your favorite hymns like Pastor Gary was saying. Sing like no one is, what is watching you. Amen. We don't care what key you are singing in or what pitch you are. Sing to your soul. Feed your soul with the hymns. Call somebody. Pray with your friends. Pray with your family. Talk to people. And as you continue to do that, our strength comes when we are connected with one another. As you pray with friends, as you have a conversation with friends, the peace of Christ is being built up in you. Don't listen to negative news. Don't call somebody who is just going to be so negative and negative and the world is coming to an end and the world is coming to a doom. Call somebody who will encourage you. Call somebody who will be so positive and offer the mind of Christ to you in this time. Why do we have to look at Jesus? Why do we have to turn our eyes onto Jesus? I love, I love this in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. Says it's interrupted. Uh. Hebrews 4 15 says, For we have a high priest, talking about Jesus Christ, we have a high priest who sympathizes, who empathizes with our struggles, with our weaknesses. Therefore, let us approach him with confidence that we may find grace to help in time of need. I'll tell you what, Jesus had been disappointed before. Jesus had been denied before. Jesus had been betrayed before. He had experienced what we are going through right now. In the Garden of Gethsemane, according to Matthew chapter 26, he told his disciples, he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto them. Listen to Jesus say that. The Savior of the world is saying, my heart, my soul is sorrowful even unto death. That's the God I'm talking about. The God who understands you when you are having sleepless nights. The Jesus who understands you when you are having anxieties. The Jesus who understands you when you are having panic and fears. And when on 
uncertainty clouds your vision and your tomorrow. Our God, our Savior, yep. understands because He had been there before. Yes. So He said, Come, my children. Come, my children. I know how you feel. I know the waves and the storms are beating hard against you, but I'm able. And I am with you. And so long as I am with you, you will come out of this. You will come out of this better than you were before. Amen. As I bring my message to an end, I want to encourage somebody in this season, feed your faith and stop your fears. Feed your faith and starve your fears and know that Jesus is on board with us. We don't know what tomorrow may bring, but one thing that we are assured of that Jesus is on board with us and we are never left alone. Amen. May God continue to bless us as we navigate and as we face our future with confidence, knowing that our Savior has overcome the world and He has promised us His peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we reflect and respond today, I invite you to join in singing, I have decided to follow Jesus. Remembering that happiness is a journey and not a destination. Bear witness to the truth of God's word until everyone is saved. Practice responsible citizenship until everyone is free. Paint the world beautiful with the brushstrokes of your faithful service. 
And then go work like you don't need the money. Study like you don't need the grades. Dance like no one is watching. And love like you've never been hurt. And may the peace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be your everlasting gift. Amen. Amen. Amen.